Hey everyone, it's Bradford, your carnivore curmudgeon, and if you're new to my channel, you may wish to know that I am an actual carnivore, but I am not a real curmudgeon, mostly. And this time, I want to bring to you a, a nice recipe for some carnivore chili with a little bit of a twist. You know, I don't really invent anything myself. I watch great things that other people do, and then I figure out how can I make that even better. So in this particular case, we're going to make a nice big pot of this delicious, spicy, creamy, silky, awesome carnivore chili. Here we go. And the first thing you're going to need is some meat. Makes sense. You're going to have two pounds of ground beef and one pound of this cube steak that I picked up on sale. And... Uh, it's going to give us a couple of different textures, both that creamy style and the uh, chunky from the cube steak. And we're going to cut this cube steak into one-inch pieces. And by the way, speaking of one-inch pieces, if you watch other people's videos and you hear them say, let's cut this up into one-inch pieces, this is what a one-inch piece looks like. So all those guys out there cutting their meat up into three-inch pieces and trying to sell it as a one-inch piece... Mm, they're either lying to themselves or the people they love, if you know what I mean. That's not one inch right there. That's two inches. But we're going to cut it up into strips, and then we're going to make those strips into smaller little chunks. And you get the picture. No reason to uh, belabor the point. We're just going to cut up this entire pound into these nice chunky uh, pieces, and then we'll have that combination of, of good texture and uh, some meaty bits along with that more creamy, silky uh, part of the ground beef, sort of like the hot dog chili. To a big pot, I'm going to add some Wagyu beef because that's what I have. And the cube steak is very lean. So you got to put some, you got to put some sort of food lube in there or it's just going to burn up. But we're going to take that pound and uh, just go ahead and brown it up real good. And be sure to uh, stir this frequently because like I said, it's very lean and you just don't want it to get all stuck to the bottom and um, you know burn up on you. So pay attention to your meat. Once it's all browned up and you can no longer see any pink, it's time to go ahead and add the ground beef uh, into the pot. And we're just gonna stick both pounds of the ground beef on top of the cube steak and then get a big old stick and start stirring it up. Same thing here. We're just going to cook it until it all gets browned through and uh, it's going to take some attention because you're going to have to stir it around and make sure it all gets cooked. But this will take about five to ten minutes at the most. And once it is all browned through, now you have a decision to make. It's at this point, when it's all cooked, that you can decide whether or not you want to drain off the fat. This is good with the fat drained off. I'm going to leave the fat in just because I want that extra fat um, in, in, the, uh, in the whole dish. Then I'm going to add to this a quart of beef broth. It was not quite enough. I did end up adding about a cup more of water to this. And so you see how it's all cloudy while that cold beef broth and the hot fat uh, hit one another. But again, I, I want to leave the fat in for the full flavor and uh, the fat content when it's all said and done. And I'm just going to mix it all through. And then uh, once it heats up, it's time to add the spices. And I don't measure my spices. Uh, I figure everybody has their own chili recipe. I'll give you some estimates. I put in about five tablespoons of chili powder. We really like our chili powder chili-y. And about one and a half to two tablespoons of garlic. About one tablespoon of onion powder is gonna go in the pot. About a half a tablespoon of salt. I'm cautious with cooking with salt because we all have different salt preferences in our house and I figured it can always be added at the end. Finally, some cayenne pepper for a little bit of heat. I put in about a tablespoon 
uh, of this cayenne pepper. You can, of course, adjust. You can also use red pepper flakes. Some people like that in their chili. But I don't want this to be blow the top of your head off chili. I just want it to have a nice, uh, a nice kick. And give it a good stir until it's all incorporated. And while it sits and simmers for a while, we're going to turn our attention to this little tip I got from Chris Cooking Nashville. And that's how to thicken your chili using egg yolks. And not only does it add some nice protein and fat, but it uh, uh, can thicken your chili to your liking. And most of the time when I make this recipe, I only use five egg yolks. But for this particular uh, batch, I used seven because the egg yolks were actually quite small. So I have to separate the whites from the yolks. And you can keep these whites for, you know, something else stirred into your omelet or, uh, you know, whatever might be to your liking. Then take a handy dandy whisk and give these uh, yolks a really good stir until they're very creamy and all uh, dissolved into one another. Now, time to clean up the mess. Very neat and tidy paper towel. Have any of you ever watched the Anal Retentive Chef from Saturday Night Live years ago? Phil Hartman, brilliant. Now, I let this uh, chili cool off for about 10 minutes, and I'm gonna take this warm broth, and I'm gonna very slowly uh, pour it into the yolks. And I, I wanna do it slowly because I don't want to uh, cook the yolks and make scrambled eggs. I just wanna sort of temper them. So I'm gonna pour this in real slow while stirring constantly. You don't stop stirring or you will get scrambled eggs. And when all was said and done, I believe I did three ladles full. So you can't really overdo it by adding the juice because um, it's all gonna go back in the pot anyway in just a moment. But you do wanna just keep stirring and, and make sure that uh, you're not cooking these eggs. Now, Put the chili back on the heat and uh, bring it back up to a uh, rolling boil. And we're going to go ahead and put these eggs and that uh, chili broth back into the chili, doing the same thing that I mentioned before, stirring constantly. So you don't want to do it too quick and dump it in there and run the risk of, I don't know, some sort of weird science experiment. But just keep stirring it and uh, it will just dissolve into the, the chili batch and uh, it's gonna end up having a great texture in the end. I guess the one thing I can say about this chili is it just takes a lot of stirring. You just gotta keep after it. And amidst all that frequent stirring, just let it, uh, let it cook until it's at the desired consistency. You know, that liquid, some of that liquid's gonna continue to uh, evaporate and then when it's at the liquidy but chunky consistency you like it's time to serve it up and if you're of the carnivore ilk that can do spices but you really don't want to do anything else or can't this is where you would stop is uh, put it in a bowl and stick it in your face and it is delicious if you can tolerate dairy uh, some cheese, especially cheddar, makes a very nice addition to this particular kind of chili. And you can never go wrong also with a little dollop of sour cream. If you eat a keto way of eating, a little uh, onion on top, I wouldn't overdo it, both flavor-wise and carb-wise, but it can make uh, also a nice contrast texture. And then Oh my gosh, a little bit of parsley flakes. I may have overdone it. Wave some fancy hands and serve. And uh, I hope you will enjoy this recipe. Give it a try. The, the cube steak really makes a difference combined with the real soft texture of the ground beef. If you give it a try, I'd love to know how it turned out for you. I really appreciate you watching and as always, I hope to see you next time.